today I would like to talk about our gifts, our giftings. And I want to tell you that um, uh, our gifts uh, open doors for us. We all have gifts. We've seen that everything we do, we should do with passion. You know, things we do for God, the Bible says, everything you do, do as unto the Lord. So it means do it with, with passion. Do it with passion. And we've seen how Jesus Christ, he described the commandments of God. And he said the, the greatest of all commandments, you shall love your God from all your heart, from all your mind, from all your soul. So this is God's commandment. We need to apply passion in everything we do. And um, uh, unleashing the passion uh, in you uh, requires to, uh, you to understand your gifts, your call, your purpose. And you will never uh, achieve the best, uh, the greatest potential you have without passion, but also without understanding your gifts. Now, the book of Proverbs says in Proverbs 18 and uh, verse 16 that a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. And that's a reality. I don't know how many of you have heard uh, Celine Dion. Does she has, uh, ha have a gift? She has a gift. Uh, and when she started singing in English, uh, Quebecois, people didn't, uh, weren't thinking much about her. She was actually, at the beginning, she was really rejected. But she had a passion. Her, pa her passion is singing. And she wanted to sing for the whole world to listen. She knew if she sang in French, she would be limited to the province of Quebec. Maybe France, not much. So she decided to use her gifts. And she started to sing in English. And suddenly she became like a diva. She's famous. She's an amazing singer. You might not like her music. That's another story. But it's, uh, she has a gifting and a talent which is amazing. Now she would ne have never uh, reached the top if she hadn't made this decision, I'm going to sing in English. I'm just giving you this as an example so you'll understand that in our life we also have gifts. Maybe you don't have a visible gift like a gift for singing. I don't have, I can sing, but I don't have this gift for singing. But um, uh, some people have a special gift. And um, understanding the, the, your natural gifts, it's very important. But God also wants to give you gifts. It's not over. Some people think, well, I don't have a talent for this, or I, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. But later in life, you might discover that you have different gifts and talents. And there, there's things that you like. Uh, I'll just give you an example from my personal life. You know, when, when uh, um, I got married, uh, I, I wanted to do the finances of the house and, the, and the taking care of the bills and all those things. And then later, I, uh, my wife found that she has a, a gift and she really enjoys, you know, paying bills and the numbers and all that. And I hate it with a passion. <laughs> So I, I just praise God for giving me a, a wife that, uh, that found that she has that gift. And uh, uh, later in life, she was, almost, she was almost 40, or she was uh, about 40, she went to university to develop that gift. Because she found that, you know, I can do this. I really enjoy doing this. Uh, actually, I, I'm in university too, I'm, I just need a pause. <laughs> because uh, I believe there's gifts that can be developed. Amen. Our natural gifts, and then God gives us gifts. And God's gifts are both natural gifts and spiritual gifts. Those are two different kinds of gifts. And I'm going to show you this in the, in the, in the New Testament. Paul said in the book of Ephesians 4, 8, therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led cap captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So when Jesus Christ was uh, dying at the cross, People were seeing just a man, but in the spirit, he was achieving something really, really important. Not just our salvation. Because people think, well, he died to save us. It was a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. You know, we think out of the box. Remember this. If you think he died to save us, done deal. There's nothing much to learn. But if you know that he did a lot more than that, then let's find it out. And here, the, uh, Paul gave this revelation. When he ascended to heaven, he sent gifts. He gave gifts 
to men. What kinds, what kinds of gifts? Well, in uh, Corinthians 7, 7, Paul talking about himself, he said, For I wish that all men were even as myself. I'm not talking about the context of this. But he says, but each one has his own gift from God. One in this manner and another in that manner. So he was talking about his celibacy and things that were happening in his life. And he, he, he regarded this as a gift. To me, celibacy is not a gift. To me, it will be a curse because I just love my family and being married and all this. But as Paul said, you know, we're not superior or inferior because of this. We're different. And we have different gifts. You know, also regarding the things of God, some people think, well, we should have just one church. Why? Because, because you think so? We're all different. Everybody thinks differently. So that's why God, in His wisdom, gave gifts. And we have different ministries and churches with different calls, and probably for different seasons in our life. Now, uh, I want just to encourage you to find out about your gifts. And maybe you think, well, I'm good for nothing. Or you maybe you think, well, I'm already too old, uh, you know, to think about these things. Now I just want to enjoy retirement, going to Florida on vacation, you know, uh, doing my garden. You know, God gives us very special gifts. Enjoy them and use them. And if you apply passion in your gifting and in your calling, you, your destiny will be fulfilled. Now, uh, we need also to understand that our purpose can change in different stages of our life. When you were a child, there was different purposes in your life and different things. You wanted to play games. You wanted to date. You wanted to find a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You had different uh, objectives and different perspectives of life. Then as we grow up, then our life changes. And, and, uh, and so we, we try to set different goals, different gifts. You know, when I, 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 I got married, I wanted to get married, but I, I wasn't prepared, and I wasn't prepared to have children. Everybody is. You know, if you think that uh, you need to wait until, until later you're prepared, you will fail the opportunity. So, so we need to seize the opportunities in our life, but uh, with the understanding that our call and our purpose might change through life. It does change. So, so we don't need to see it as a static thing. And also our gifts can be changed or supernaturally added. And how do I know this? I know that I can multiply my gifts. And usually time will help me, you know, in, in, in this spin of life to multiply my gifts. So we can receive gifts by impartation. And one of the, the ways this happens in church is by the laying of hands. So there's gifts that can be received. Now, just to mention these gifts, uh, you all have heard probably about um, the, this parable of the talents, that when Jesus was teaching about this man that went to a foreign land in a journey and entrusted his property to his servants. And uh, it says, this is the Amplified Bible, it says on verse 15, to one he gave five talents, probably $5,000, it's not a lot, to another two, to another one, to each in proportion to his own uh, personal ability, then he departed, left the country. And then uh, the Bible says that the one that, that had the five talents multiplied, so five multiplied is ten, so it multiplied by two. Uh, and the other one, the two talents, he gained two talents more. But uh, the third one, he dug a hole and hid the talents there. Now, we know the talents were money, but even today, this word talents, it's referred as personal gifts. So when Jesus was telling this story, uh, they didn't perceive it as personal gifts. They perceived it as money. Can you say money? money. Do you understand money? Yes. Do, is it better to have uh, $5,000 or 10000 yes. All right, so we're on the same page. So, see, so Jesus is teaching about money because people understand this. And, and the unit of money, it wasn't the dollar, it was the talent. So the talent was the unit of money at this time. But now we understand that he was talking about special giftings. And uh, uh, after this happened, and a little bit further on verse 28, uh, so you know the story that he was upset with the one that did nothing. And he said, take the talent from that one that did nothing and give it to the one that has the 10. Sounds, sounds like pretty unfair, eh? 
Does, doesn't it sound like unfair? You know, take it from the one that has nothing and give it to the one that has a lot. Do you know that the world works like this? People that have money, they have more money. And people that don't have money, they lose it for the ones that have more money. That's a natural rule of money. But let's uh, just think about uh, talents. And there's three keys that I would like you to understand. The first one is action. If you have talents, but you don't take action with those talents, you will eventually lose what you have. Let's say you have a talent for cooking. You enjoy cooking. Are you using your talent? You might use it, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, cook a meal and invite me to your home. <laughs> you know, I appreciate your talent. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you can use that talent, you know, in your family. And people say, oh, grandma is an awesome cook. Oh, she's excellent. And grandpa, look at the garden. He has this talent. You know, you know it, it seems like a little thing, but it takes action in order to develop your talents. And then a second thing, strategy. They had to invest in the right place. They had a strategy. They thought, you know, we're going to, to use a strategy. We're going to invest here. You, you know, I, I don't have more, uh, much money, so I cannot invest, but uh, we have Pastor Louis, he's good in investment. Pastor Louis, what happened to people that invested in gold? Increased. Increased. Yeah. But I, I just listened that people that invested a lot of money in gold, they're in deep trouble. Oh, in the last five years. In the, because it's going, yeah. it's going down. So, so in terms of investment, we need to know where to invest. We, we've heard of those scandals that, you know, remember a few years, I don't remember the name of the guy, a guy that has a Ponzi scheme here in Montreal, everybody was, Earl Jones. People were putting money on Earl Jones, thinking they're going to be rich and everything disappeared. So the guy that, uh, uh, that uh, didn't invest the, his talent, probably he heard of an Earl Jones in the area, and he said, you know, people lost money. I'm not going to lose this. So uh, strategy. And the, the last thing is accountability. So now remember this. God gives us talents. Do you think you're going to be accountable for the talents that he entrusted you? <laughs> you know, I enjoy church. I love church. I don't like traditional church. I don't like religion. And most of us here will identify with this. But sometimes religion will push you to do things that you don't want to do. I want to tell you that, that here at Passion Canada, we don't want to push you to do anything you don't want to do. But whatever you do, do it with passion. And know this, if you have a talent and you don't use your talent, it's wasted and you're going to be one day accountable. Not to me, not to anyone, but you'll be accountable to the one who gave you the talent. So, uh, and when we use these three keys, passion will take us to higher heights. Our passion and the gifts. So, uh, and uh, if we follow the, and we unleash our purpose and we unleash our passion, we'll achieve great things in life. You know, you can go from a slave to the prime minister of a country just like that. People say, oh, that was just for the Bible. What about Nelson Mandela? Didn't it happen to him? He went from jail to, to become, you know, such a well-known man. So there, there's all sorts of things that God can do that we don't imagine. One of the ways it's described in the Bible, it's uh, in the book uh, of Isaiah chapter 40. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and I had to put it here. And it says, Isaiah 40, 28, Have you not known, have you not heard, that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Do you need strength? Do you feel faint? Come on, sometimes we feel discouraged. I talked with a, a number of you th this week, some of you were discouraged. I wish I had an injection of encouragement to give you. I don't. But God who is here, He has the, the power to do these things. And in verse 30 it says, Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. 
And this is the one that I really love. Verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isn't that a powerful promise? Now let me elaborate a little bit on this promise. Now when I was uh, about my son's age, 16, I spent my, my summer uh, uh, piloting a machine just like this one. I was trying to find out one on the internet and I found it. It's a glider, this one is a, a, a two-seater. And I, I spent the whole summer you know, uh, enjoying it and I was addicted to flying. I had, I had to fly these gliders. In fact, there was a terrible accident in Whistler yesterday with one of these. But, uh, but th those are not that dangerous. And these little uh, airplanes, if you see, they don't have an engine. There's no engine there. It's just the fuselage, and, and then uh, this one has a, a vertical cable. Uh, I, the one that I, that, that I used, it was a, a, another airplane, a little Cessna, will take the airplane at about uh, uh, three to 6,000 feet, and then uh, by the radio, we'll say, okay, here's okay, and we'll push a, a knob, and the, the, the cable will be loose, and here uh, was I, uh, on the top of the earth, just listening to uh, uh, the wind, just like shh, and with, uh, you know, the, uh, all the knobs there saying how fast I was falling. <laughs> because that, that's what you see on those, you see the speed, and you see how many meters per second you're falling. And it's always falling. It's always falling. Until you get to a place and there's a technique which is called tourmaling. What am I talking about this? Just get it, because I'm talking about the eagle. This technique, and uh, I know it's hard to see there, it teaches how to mount, how to go up on, an, on, a, on a plane with no engine or even with an engine. Turmaling, it's in certain areas that are not visible because we cannot see the air. It, there's like a climb, like a lift. You know, hot air goes up and cold, cold air goes down. In certain areas, they have these thermal currents that push up. And when you're piloting those gliders, suddenly you feel something. <laughs> something bumps. And, and it starts mounting. And we need to imagine, it's like a, 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 a wheel, it's a spiral of, of wind that does like this and goes up. Remember, everything that God created obeys to a pattern of a spiral. Even your DNA, the earth spinning around the sun, so there's a pattern of a spiral in everything. And I want you to, to understand this. Because the Bible says that those that wait upon the Lord will mount up on, on wings like eagles. So how, do, how does the eagle uh, mount up? Exactly like this. Eagles don't flap their wings. They flap a little bit, but not much, just to gain a little bit of speed. Eagles just glide. And how do they glide? Exactly like I learned on these little airplanes. They, they pick up what it's called a climb or a lift. And when you're piloting one of those gliders, either those or those delta wings, I, I, I see them uh, by my house there on Mont Saint Hilaire. I see them going up, and and sometimes, the, the, wow, they really go up on the, on these gliders. They get those currents from the the mountain and the lake that that's over there, and, and and so you need to find where's the center of the spin. Put one wing, let's say if you're spinning that direction, put the left wing towards the middle of, of this of this spiral and then just glide and try to keep there. And then you look at the knob and if he's mounting, it shows you're mounting, I'm there. If it shows that, uh, that uh, you're coming up, I'm losing it, where is it? And you need to try to find it. On a glider, we cannot find it, but an eagle knows how to find it because the eagle will feel the temperature. The eagle will feel where things are. And so that's why when you see uh, eagles mounting, you know, they're, they're just spinning around, sometimes smaller circles, sometimes big circles, and this is how they climb. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. And it's a great thing when you're mounting up without doing any particular effort. Just, you know, keeping there and waiting for that 
that air to elevate you to a higher ground. Let me tell you that in, in Christ, sometimes we're disappointed. Sometimes we lose our strength. Sometimes it, it, it's like you know, I was uh, preaching in, on a Spanish uh, small group uh, Friday, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, I was talking about this when David was so discouraged that he had no more strength to cry. But those that wait upon the Lord, when you put your trust in God, you can just mount mount up. And, uh, and, and let me tell you, this has all to do with uh, our gifting. Because we need to learn how to get the upward climb. And, uh, and also, we need to set a higher bar in our lives. If you set a low bar, you will never soar above, above it. By other uh, words, if you think, well, I might you know, get a job. And I would like a salary of $20,000 a year. If that's your bar, it's not hard to achieve a salary of $20,000. Is that hard? Is it enough? Maybe for you, for me it's not enough. I need a little bit more. So we need to set the bar a little bit higher. So when you're looking for a job, if they pay you $10 an hour, but you set the bar that you need 40,000 or 45,000 a year, you know, if you accept those $20 an hour, you're going to be in trouble. Are you following me? This is just an example. Now, in the spiritual things, we also have to set a higher bar. Some people sometimes ask, you know, why are you there in the movie theater? Well, because we want people to come to church that otherwise wouldn't come. And we also want to uh, fill the, the movie theater and we have room for you know, more than a thousand people there. So why not using a movie theater? And why pay a high mortgage when we, can, when we, we need the, the room mainly for Sundays and other occasions? Are you following me? So, so, but then when we choose, we want to, to choose a place that is clean, well, that is proper, and that's comfortable. That's the bar we've set. We could have set the bar, and we could have rent, you know, a, a cheap place, you know, with the wooden chairs and, uh, and old and smelling like mold, but that's not the bar we want to set for this church. This is just an example. Now, in our personal life, you need to do the same thing. You know, in Malachi 4, 2, it says, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall, shall go out leaping like cows from the stall, so uh, healing and the spiritual gifts uh, uh, obey to this same principle. You know, when the sun is high, it's when eagles fly. They rarely fly by night. Sometimes they do. But it's when the sun is up that you have, you know, the, 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 the hot currents that will lift you up. In the spirit, we also need to seize the opportunities and seize the time to do things in the spirit. I'm going to tell it again. Some of you are taking notes. We need to seize the right time in order to do things in the spirit. There are seasons that there's darkness. Darkness prevails. And when darkness prevails, we're not dead, but we will not, see, will not soar above uh, uh, to, the, to the height that we should when there's a season of darkness. And we never know when it's going to, to end, but God will bring seasons of light and seasons of darkness. I believe God is bringing a season of light like we've never seen before. We'll see the sun of His righteousness shining like never before. And, and you, can, you will be able to use your gifts and healing will come in His wings. Now, uh, in order for this to happen, we need to wait on the Lord. And the exact translation says those who fear the Lord. And... Um, I, I want to explain ju just what, what, what do I mean by the fear uh, of the Lord. Because it's the fear of the Lord that will take you to higher heights. It's the fear of the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord has two aspects. One is for the, what, the unbeliever. People that don't believe in God, the fear of the Lord is the, is the judgment of God. But those that trust in God for the believer, the fear of the Lord is the respect we have for God. It's the respect we have for God. And, and the fear of the Lord can become a consuming fire. That's what Paul taught. He said, 
the fear of God to, in me, it's a consuming fire. It's a passion. It's a passion. And when you have this fire, this, this passion, you know, you'll be able to soar above the, the crowd, to soar above the bar. And, you know, people say the cream always goes to the top, not in my coffee. But, uh, but uh, this is what people say. But when you have this um, perception of who you are in Christ, you can expect great things. Don't go for anything mediocre. Just expect great things in everything you do in life. I, I firmly believe that it, it is the will of God to prosper us. I don't preach what they call you know, the, the gospel of prosperity. But I, I don't know any other gospel either. The gospel is good news. It's not that we're going all to be rich, but we're going to all to be enriched in, in some way. Amen. If you're poor, you'll be enriched. Your needs will be supplied. If you're rich, God bless you. You'll have more. You know th those laws. So it, I'm not preaching that we all should be rich, but we all should prosper and go above our limitations. And this has to do with knowing our gifts, applying passion to what, you, what, what we do. And um, uh, just uh, as a final thought, uh, I would like to, to mention uh, um, a parable in Scripture that I think everybody knows. I'm not going to read it. But have you ever read, read about the prodigal son? Do you know that parable of the prodigal son? So let me finish with that uh, parable. <coughs> Excuse me. So there were two kids, uh, same family, same father. And one of the children said, uh, Father, I want uh, the money that will be my inheritance when you die. And I want to go on my own, and I want to have my own life. And the father was saddened, but gave him half of, of, uh, of, of uh, what will be his, uh, the inheritance of both children, and he went to a foreign land. In that foreign land, he, uh, he was uh, uh, doing everything people do outside of the father's house, in this sense. So he was uh, partying, uh, he had parties all the time, then he went to prostitution and all sorts of things. He wasted all the money. Now, when he was broke, he decided to return to the father's house. So here we have the two children. And when he returns to the father's house, the father was waiting for him. And in fact, the father embraced him, gave him a ring. So he said, here's a special ring. Gave him a new ring. Uh, told the servants, give, give him the best wardrobe. So he gave him uh, a wardrobe. And he said, let's party, let's kill the, the best animal we have. Let's do a big party. So these, these are all what? Gifts. Gifts. Think about this. When the prodigal returns, he receives what? Gifts. Gifts. This is very important to understand. So the first child abandons the father, but returns with the fear of the Lord. The second child, however, the other son, lived a life of obedience but he complains about his brother. It's always like this in God's kingdom. God's children, you have the two types. The ones that have the fear of God and the ones that don't have that fear, they are afraid of God. It's very different. Very, very different. The fear of God takes me to use my talents because one day I'll be accountable to Him. When you're afraid of God, you hide the talent. These two children, I'm not saying that the one, the first one did what, what was right, because he didn't. He committed a sin. But when he returned with the fear of God, he approached the father with high respect, and he received new gifts. The other one complained, uh, and uh, uh, he had obedience to, to the father, but he didn't... Uh, he didn't get it, you know? It didn't click. The father had to tell him, you have all, everything that is mine, is yours. But he was complaining, saying, I didn't receive gifts. And the father, by other words, was saying, you already have the gifts. So, I don't know if you're a prodigal son, if you're returning to the Lord, if you're living on your own and, you know, far away from God, but let me tell you this. Whenever you come to the father's house, he has gifts prepared for you. God's gifts. So, so remember this. When you're in a low position, 
like the, that prodigal living with pigs. You're in the lowest. How did he went from the lowest to gifts? First, he had to recognize, I created this mess. Second, there is one that can probably receive me, not a, if not a son, just as a simple worker. This talks about the fear of the Lord. So when you have this kind of expectancy, you know why some people sometimes are disappointed with church and with God? Because they have no fear of God. And they, they heard about these things, oh, they pray for me and now I'm going, my life will be changed. It's not prayer from another person that will change your life. It's your attitude. God sees your heart. And God loves you. And when you approach God with the attitude of seeking forgiveness for your sins, with the attitude of saying, I don't care if I'm going just to be a servant. I just want to be close to you. I want to live in your house. When you have this attitude, guess what happens? The spiral of life will take you to receive gifts. The ring, it's a representation of the authority. The mantle, it's a representation of the power and of, of, of the covering. And, and uh, that sacrificed animal, it's a representation of what Jesus Christ did for you. So this is the end of my message. And I want to tell you, use your passion to soar to higher heights. You know what God says? God says, my ways are higher than your ways. This doesn't mean that we need to say, oh, God's ways are so high. Oh, God's ways are so mysterious. No. This means that we can soar to a higher position. And the way to have that propulsion that will take us to higher heights is to approach God with a deep sense of respect for who He is with a deep sense of knowing that we all committed sins, but He is right here with arms wide open, waiting for you. And He wants to take you to higher heights. This is why it says that and Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to the Father's house to prepare a place for you. He didn't say, I will return and they'll prepare a place for you here. But He said, no, I'm going to a higher place to a place of, of elevation. And so in, in our spiritual life, we always need to wait for the climb. Maybe now you're in a downfall. Maybe now you feel that you're desperate. You know, even youth will faint. People of strength will faint. But those that fear the Lord, those that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings, wings like eagles. Let us just stand. I'd like to offer a prayer for you. And just, just after this prayer, <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> if you need personal prayer, we have different pastors here that would like to pray for you. And, uh, and if you need uh, help in anything in your life, we're here to help also. We're, we're not just here to, to, not just to preach a message, but it's to walk the walk with you and to help people to achieve the best. God has something wonderful in store for you. And if there's something that is bothering you, there's some, some area of your life you feel that you're really, really down. Learn this. God wants to bring you in that spin up, upwards to higher levels. And He will do it because He loves you. Jesus Christ died on that cross, paid the price not only for our sins, but also to give us a, a, a life filled with His gifts. And we just need to receive them. Amen. You just need to receive them. You just need to say, God, here I am. I want to receive your gifts. And, and God's gifts, you cannot choose them. You cannot choose them. Some people say, oh, I want the gift of healing. I want to do this. And then they, they do all things because they want the gift of healing. Maybe God wants to give you a gift of prophecy. Or a gift of just helping others. Just tell the Lord, Lord, here I am. Just as I am, give me whatever gift you want to give me. Whatever you have for me, Lord. And even if there's, there's nothing for me, I'll stay here in your house just as one of your workers. When your attitude is like this, suddenly you go from the bottom to the top.
Because in Christ, you're the head, not the tail. You're blessed. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your house. You're blessed everywhere. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to do a simple prayer, asking God for forgiveness and asking for his blessing in our life. And I know many of you, some of you, I, I've never met you, but for the sake of those that probably don't know how to do a prayer, I'm going to do a simple prayer. I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me. I don't want you to pray anything that you don't want. So if there's something that you listen and say, I don't want this, just be in silence. In, in silence. But I, I'm sure you will appreciate this prayer. I'm just going to uh, lead you in this prayer of submission, just telling God, please forgive me. Here am I. Lift him up. I want to receive your gifts. You think you can do this prayer? So please repeat after me. Let's just bow our heads in reverence to the Lord. Just say with me, Dear God, I thank you for what Jesus Christ, your son, did for me. I thank you for the work of the cross, for my salvation. And the Bible says that when he ascended to heaven, he gave gifts to men. And today, Lord, I acknowledge that I need forgiveness. Forgive me for my sins. Give me a new life. And I'm also willing to receive the gifts, to receive the new talents that you have for me. I want to be faithful, and I pray, God, that you'll bring me up to higher ground. Set my feet upon the rock, firm my feet, and Lord, as the eagle climbs to higher heights, I believe that you want to take me above my problems and above the difficulties that I'm facing. I believe it and I receive it in Jesus' name, amen.